Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is video number three in the CK series. And in the last few video, we have covered some fundamentals of Docker containers. We even Dockerized the sample to do app. And in this video, we'll be looking into multi-stage build. Uh, yes, the multi-stage build is something that we use when we have to reduce the image size, when we have to improve the performance of Docker containers. And basically, this is one of the best practice. And this is what we should be doing right now. Uh, pardon my voice uh, in this video uh, because uh, I'm having severe cold and some throat infection. So uh, I'm having a ginger lemon tea just to make sure that I could record seamlessly. But even though my audio will be a bit rusty, so please bear with me. And uh, yeah, let's start the video. So here is our GitHub repository. If uh, you are following along the video, these all details might have been uploaded to GitHub already and link will be there in the description section. So don't worry about that. In the first video, day one video, we covered the Docker fundamentals, like what were the issues before containers, how Docker solved this problem, Docker definition, uh, difference between Docker and a virtual machine, its workflow and its architecture. Right? In the second video, we dockerized a sample application, we installed the Docker desktop, we cloned an application and then we wrote the Docker file. And then we, you know, uh, had, had a look at few of the commands and the workflow like Docker build, tag, push, pull, Docker run images, Docker exec, etc. Right. Um, now, in this particular video, we'll be looking into Docker multi-stage builds. Right. We have already discussed the challenges that we had uh, with the multi-stage build. The Docker file that we created, it was over 200 MB, even though we were using a lightweight Alpine image. So in this video, we'll be using Docker multi-stage to reduce that image size. And I will show you how we can do that. The comment target and the like target for this videos are as follows. So um, I'm expecting at least 100 comments and 250 likes in next 24 hours. I'm sure it will be an easier task for you. So please do that. Please support me and uh, you will see the next video soon then. All right, let's see how Docker multi-stage build works. So for that, we'll be first cloning an application. So let's do a git clone on uh, this app. Uh, I'll provide you the URL in the description. So this has been done. Now let's do an ls and do a cd into that directory to do app doctor. Now, let me clear the screen and do ls again. So now we don't have any Docker file in this, but we know how the project was built. So we know what all dependencies and what all steps it require, what all node version and everything else it requires. Uh, with that, we'll start building the Docker file. So I'm going to do touch Docker file. So touch command will create blank file. It will create an empty file. So if you do touch, and if you do a VI on this, there won't be any content to it. We have just created it. So let's start by writing the instructions for our Docker file. So as like what we did before, we'll start with the uh, from a base image, which is node 18 Alpine. Okay. And in that we'll also add uh, one more step. It says as installer. So installer is nothing but the name of the stage. We'll get back to this later. But for now, just remember what we did earlier. We just created uh, instructions to set our base image as Alpine, which is based on Node 18. Okay. Now, the next step is work directory. Similarly, what we did earlier, we'll set the work directory as slash app. And then we'll also copy um some files such as package.json and package.log.json to this directory now uh, this will be copied inside the container and also because we have used a wildcard character that means any file that starts with pa package and end with .json right so that means it will take uh, package.json package.log.json then the next step would be to run npm install. You know, to install the dependencies, this is what we did earlier as well. And once the dependencies are installed, we'll then copy the content of this of results like node modules and everything to the container. But 
Till here, we are not copying it to the container itself. We are copying it to the layer. Just, just remember this concept. We are still copying it to the layer. So <clears throat> once that is done, once we have all the files needed, then we can run npm build. Run npm run build. Okay, so this command will run the npm build. Now, after that has been done, it will generate a new folder which has all the build artifacts. Uh, now, what we'll be doing, we'll be doing an extra step, the one that we did not do earlier uh, because we were not using multi-stage build earlier. So let's do that. So we'll use another image which called Nginx and we'll choose the, let's say, latest uh, version of it and we'll call it as deployer so this is another stage that we are using I'll, I'll get back to it just just wait for a minute okay now we also need to copy the files that was created earlier from installer and we'll copy that <coughs> uh, app build folder so everything inside the build folder inside user share nginx html so this is the folder where html will serve the static pages now <clears throat> let's go back to the first line first line says uh, use uh, an alpine image which has node 18 install okay and use that as installer stage so that's our first stage installer so whatever is happening after this will be on this stage so in that stage, we have initialized a work directory. We copied some files, then we run npm install and all the files generated by npm install, we copied that in that stage. Okay. I hope this is clear till here. Now we are running the npm build command. npm build will generate the build folder along with a few other files that will be serving the website actually, right? But now, Remember earlier we were copying everything. We were using copy dot 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 after the npm build and it will copy everything to the container itself. But we don't need everything else. We only need the build artifacts. We only need the files that is needed to serve the application. We don't need node modules and other dependencies file, right? So for that, we added one more stage which is based on an nginx image because nginx is something that we need to serve the web application so we uh, use that image as deployer another stage okay so deploy is another stage and then from the installer image so remember everything that was done till here okay till npm run build from the first line was part of installer stage right so this is what we are doing over here in the last line we are copying the build directory, only the build directory from the installer stage to this directory inside the container as per our latest stage. Now our container will only have the app slash app slash build directory and it would not have the node modules or any other irrelevant file. So this is what we call a multi-stage Docker container or multi-stage build. In that we specify different stages and we only copy the files that are needed. It helps with the performance. It helps with the security because we are only copying the files that is needed to serve the application. And it is faster. Image size is slower and yeah, few, few other like it provides some isolation and it makes the build production ready. So that's um, what we did. And then we just save the file with the WQ. Okay, now let's run docker build. Docker build hyphen T name of the image. Let's call it multi stage dot. Okay. okay, it says unknown instructions. Uh, I misspelled work directory so let me open the file again and it should be work directory. okay let's try this again okay now it says unknown flag from installer over here it should be equal to equal to and not hyphen 
sorry one equal to so from equal to installer that's how it should be and let's try it again and now it is building the docker image okay so let's see let's run docker images and this was our latest image multi-stage created four second ago and the size is 195 mb even though this application is bigger than the earlier application it has a lot of other things it has nginx as well and the application itself is uh, heavier than what we were using earlier even though the image size is lower right so um this is what i wanted you to see there are a few other commands that uh, i need to show you so first is uh, let's say because there are a lot of images it will occupy a lot of space in our local repository so let's do some cleanup so to do that let's run this command docker image rm and then a name of the image use multi stage or don't just remove this one yet uh, let me clean up some earlier image so let's um like this let's pick this okay and hit enter okay it uh, says this is not a valid command oh i did not specify rm docker image rm and then the name of the image which has been <coughs> removed now it was untagged the image and then it removed it this is how we perform the cleanup and then uh, let me clear the screen and then do a uh, docker ps again so ps if you remember we did to check all the running containers we don't have any running container at this moment um otherwise it would have shown you over here but let's just uh, run the command docker exec okay let me first see uh the image name that we have created multi-stage okay so docker run hyphen it hyphen dp 3000 because we'll be exposing this app on port 35 oh sorry 3000 and then multi-stage i guess this should do it Okay, and now run docker ps okay so our container is up and running um now let's say we want to investigate this container it had some issues and we want to investigate it so the first step that you can do is you can run docker log and then name of the container or even the container id so let me pick the container id and docker logs maybe okay so, so these are the standard output log uh, so std out message generated from the container itself so this is log what we can see or we can exec into the container as well like uh, this is what we have seen earlier so let's do a docker exec hyphen it and then um, container id and command let's use sh okay i'm inside the container and do you remember in which directory i'll be in by default slash because even though we specified a slash app as the work directory at the beginning but when we created the image from the second stage we did not specify any work directory so it took the default slash right so now let's see what all uh, folders we have we have uh, all the folders of an alpine image and everything which we used as the base image so it will be inside where so cd where log okay over here we can see the log so uh, nginx log less oh, less command is not here because it's really very lightweight uh, operating system that we have used so let's use vi nginx okay vi is also not there how about cat nginx oh nginx is a directory so let me do cd into that directory ls again and then let's do a cat on axis logs 
okay because our application was not served so that's why this log is empty uh, let's see if it has any error i don't think it will have anything at this moment yeah it doesn't have anything so i mean we have the log directory over here you can check all the logs from here okay now um let's see what's inside the app folder Do we even have the app folder? No, we don't have because we created the files inside the HTML folder where Nginx was serving the web pages, right? So if you remember that it was cd user share and Nginx HTML. So here our file should reside. So it has uh, the static files. It has index.html and uh, a few metadata files, right? So only these files were copied, only the static files, only the files that were needed were copied to the container. And there was not even the app folder uh, created in, in this container. Right? Let's exit from this container. Now you can also see uh, the configuration of this particular container or any container with the help of docker inspect command. So this is the command that you can use. And then followed by docker uh, container name or ID, any unique identifier of it. So if you do docker inspect on this, you will see all the values, right? Uh, MAC address, uh, IPv4. Uh, so this will be our uh, <coughs> local IP assigned to this container. And then uh, sandbox key, a host details, port on which it is exposed. So host IP, host port, you know, on, it is running on local host 3000 and a lot of other details, uh, Nginx version, you know, whatever we have specified or whatever it had generated by itself. So every detail you can look into it uh, using Docker inspect command. So this is really handy in case you want to troubleshoot something. So Docker logs, Docker uh, inspect, Docker exec. These are some really important commands. Okay, uh, let's see what else uh, we can cover. So yeah, I guess that, that should be it about the Docker multi-stage build. So there are a few other best practices of running Docker containers, such as it should be run as a known root user and few other things. So let me know or like if you don't know, maybe do a little research and let me know in the comment section below what are some of the other best practices that we use to spin up a container or to build a Docker container, right? So one of them we saw, uh, we use Docker multi-stage build. One of them I just told you, like we use known root user so that the container will be executed uh, from an unprivileged user. Now read something. Uh, there'll be a lot of content available on the Docker website itself. So go to that and read something and let me know in the comment what other Docker best practices that we use, right? Um, because when we are working on something that we create for ourselves, we don't really care about these things. But when we work on a project that is production grade, that is something that we are creating for a client or we are, let's say, preparing for the job, we do everything as part of the best practices so yeah so do some research and let me know and i will see you soon with the next video make sure you complete the target of comments and likes for this video and i will see you with the next video thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a good day